Republican strategists are apparently in a panic over the real, very real possibility that Donald Trump could lose his re-election bid. Uh, so now there are various different sources to this story, uh, including GOP, uh, you know, uh, basically strategists that have been working on the Senate campaigns uh, and people in Republican circles. Uh, and so they're, they're very, very concerned, right? Because according to some polls, Donald Trump is trailing Vice President Joe Biden by a lot, 10 points nationally. And according to their own internal state polls, not much better. So now, of course, there's always the caveat of polls could be, you know, a little bit off or a little bit wrong. Even some of these uh, GOP pollsters says, well, the, you know, the, the Biden winning by 14 points in Michigan. Well, that's a little bit off. It's a little high. But they still had Biden ahead of him significantly in, in Michigan and in other places where Donald Trump won back in 2016. Uh, and so they are freaking out about this. In fact, more than a half dozen GOP strategists working on Senate and House races told Vice News that they've seen Trump's numbers plunge in states and districts across the country. And again, that has him panicked. Uh, so now a lot of the factors, of course, are because of the terrible coronavirus response, um, his reaction to Black Lives Matter uh, protests, and of course, the disastrous economy. You've got all of those. You've got this basically this perfect storm of terrible things and Donald Trump's inability to actually lead. And not only that, but also to give any sort of wins to his base. In fact, he just recently lost on DACA. Uh, so thankfully he lost because now he's not going to be able to, at this point, deport 700,000 people uh, that are in the DACA program. He's also only built a wall around the White House uh, and hit out in a bunker. So he's got really no big legislative wins here uh, unless you count the tax cuts for the rich, which, yeah, let, let's go let's go brag about how we cut corporate taxes. That'll play well with the Republican audience. That'll play well with any audience. <laughs> so now, according to one GOP strategist, he says, quote, the environment really sucks for us right now. We've got a worldwide pandemic. The economy is slipping, and now we have a race war attacked on. If the election were held today, we'd be talking about a wipeout. It couldn't possibly be, be that bad, right? Well, they said, we'd be in landslide territory. Jesus. Well, then. Uh, now, lucky for them, and I say lucky for them, the election is still months away. So understand that anything can happen, right? Anything can happen. The, the field could change. Uh, there could be, uh, I guess, a disaster when it comes to Biden. Uh, or, you know, the economy could get better. And we certainly would, would like for you know, the economy to get better. I uh, certainly don't want, to get to, don't want it to get worse. But then again, I don't see any reason that it could get better at this point. As again, Republicans are awful stewards of the economy. Uh, and so, but not only that. Another caveat here, never underestimate the Democrats' ability to take victory, or I'm sorry, take defeat from the jaws of victory. So they're really good at that. Uh, but nonetheless, at this moment in time, it's a disaster and they are in a panic. So now let's look at that a little bit closer, right? So now apparently uh, the president's doing very badly in some of the states and districts that he had won in 2016. For example, in Michigan, as I mentioned, Trump, uh, which Trump won in 2016, you have Biden's lead edging into double digit territory. And so it could be, you know, nine to nine to 10 points instead of 14. So, you know, something to watch out for. Right. Not only that, but you also have Wisconsin and Pennsylvania. Uh, and in those states, Biden holds a, a pretty good lead. Uh, you also have Arizona, uh, in which Biden polls better than Trump outside of the margin of error. And so there's that, right? Now, Biden's also slightly ahead in Florida, Florida and North Carolina, two states that Donald Trump won last time. And so understand that if this holds, and, and again, caveats, old caveats included, right? Right now, perfect storm, okay? How long that storm lasts, we don't know. 
So understand that. But nonetheless, Republican strategists said that Georgia, Iowa, Ohio, and even Texas are now within the margin of error in recent surveys. Trump won Georgia by five percentage uh, points, Ohio by eight, and Iowa and Texas by nine in 2016. So a lot of the leads that he had in a lot of these places are disappearing. He is losing support left and right. And so that's bad for him. Look, I, I have the opinion, and, and a lot of you, I think, dis might disagree with me. But I think all things considered, if the, everything stays the same, right, if we have similar conditions by the time November rolls around, I think Biden's going to walk into this. And, and the reason I say that is not because, oh, well, Biden's such a great candidate. No, you guys know me. You know Biden's a terrible candidate. He's, he's, he's a garbage candidate. Uh, but the thing is, he's a little less garbage than Donald Trump. And so long as the Democrats continue to hide Biden in his bunker so that he doesn't can't come out and say stupid things, Donald Trump is going to continue to say and do stupid slash harmful things. Uh, and so that's going to make this election a referendum on Donald Trump. Uh, and so it's different than 2016, right? Now, before before the pandemic, before the economic downturn, before all that stuff, I, I was still saying that, look, if you will, you know, if you nominate Joe Biden and, and a candidate that has, you know, that offers no change, then you're going to get Donald Trump. Right. Because there's just not going to be enough enthusiasm. People aren't going to be really excited to go out into the polls. I, I'm I'm actually I think that I'm probably wrong about this now. Right. And so the way that I see it now is it's no longer an election of status quo versus radical change. Right. I think the dynamic has shifted away from populism. Uh, in a way, right? Uh, and, and the reason I say that uh, is because here you had in the Democratic primary, right? Bernie Sanders running in the populist position. He's got the most popular policies. People like his policy, right? It, it, but yet in states where Biden clearly had the majority when he, you know, uh, in the voting when, when, when he won, People still said, well, we would prefer a Medicare for all. We would prefer a single payer system, a living wage, all the all the policies that Bernie Sanders was, uh, you know, in, in favor of is in favor of. And so why would that be? Well, it's because people are less concerned about those populist policies, even though they're in favor of them. And they decided to go with what they considered the candidate that they thought would take out Donald Trump. So now I disagree with that. Right. I, I think the TV is, is is telling people or was telling people that Biden was the best choice when he obviously wasn't uh, and that Bernie would lose to Trump. No, Bernie would have crushed Donald Trump. I think anybody would crush Donald Trump at this point. Again, Trump is not in a strong position here. All he knows how to do is attack. But really, he's got to sit there and defend. Right. And so the situation is, again, it, it, it has changed. He's not running against Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton is still more unpopular than Donald Trump. Nobody cares. Nobody likes Hillary Clinton. Uh, but the situation for Biden is a little bit different. There are more people that, that have a favorable view of Joe Biden. Again, the more you know about Joe Biden, the, the less I think that you would like them. Because, I mean, the, look, you guys know, you've watched the show, right? Serial liar, right? Uh, alleged sexual assault. Tara Reid, you know, all this stuff. Right. And so I get I you know, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of Joe Biden. Right. And I'm not saying that he's a good candidate. What I'm saying is that people likely because they're not exposed to all the stuff that Biden has actually done for who he is. And they just remember him for the positive association to to President Obama and think, well, this guy is way better than Donald Trump. Well, policy wise on some things, sure. But again, they're both not great candidates. Uh, and so despite that, I'm going to say something controversial. Biden's still better than Trump, objectively. Uh, and so what sucks is that, again, we could have this. This was a missed opportunity, right? This was a big missed opportunity because, again, Trump is so incredibly beatable that the Democrats argument for getting Biden in there as the nominee was, well, you know, we got to have somebody that could be Trump, right? Electability. Well, Bernie Sanders always had more electability than Donald Trump. 
uh, and Joe Biden. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, definitely more than Joe Biden. He would have beaten Donald Trump in 2016. And now that was when Trump was at his strongest. Now Trump is basically at his weakest point, I think, where a ham sandwich could beat him. And so, unfortunately, um, we missed out. Bernie Sanders got screwed over uh, once again, you know. Uh, it was a Monday night, you know, uh, or Bloody Sunday. or No, I think it was Bloody Monday, uh, where, you know, all of these establishment candidates lined up behind Joe Biden, uh, even though Joe Biden – didn't have a ground game, and he still doesn't, and he might not even need it. And that's the sucky thing, man. That's the that's the worst part about this is that Joe Biden's not even going to have to work for it. He's got all of the advantages at this moment of time, and it, it is incredibly depressing. Now, again, some of those things that are in favor of, of Joe Biden are, you know, opposed to the to, to what Hillary Clinton ran on. She had incredible negatives going into this, right? He is not that unpopular and he has got a better, he's got a more favorable election chance. Now, if you would ask me, of course, before coronavirus and all that, I thought Biden would have had a much, much more difficult race that uh, Donald Trump certainly could have won the electoral college again. Uh, and that certainly still is a possibility, but I think it's a much lower possibility. And so because of everything going on, you know, I think Biden has a better chance, especially if they do keep him in a bunker. Which, again, super sad. Uh, now, there's more. It turns out these same Republicans are worried that they're also going to have a wipeout at the congressional level. Well, so now this is where you actually have some good news, right? Uh, this is where it's something positive because one GOP strategist involved in multiple congressional races said that during a recent all-staff conference call to touch base with their own races filled them with a sense of growing alarm. Quote, I had a call this week with my entire team, said the source. It became a 15-minute conversation. Literally every single race we're involved in, we're seeing Trump's numbers dip, and in most concerning is the slip with seniors. If he loses the senior vote, that's it. He's got nothing. That source said if the election were held today, it would be devastating for the GOP. We would not just lose the White House, but the Senate and likely some House seats as well. Even though most of the map being fought over this time is actually favorable to Republicans. These are these are seats that Democrats uh, flipped in 2018 that were Republican seats. And they might even still not be able to get those back. They also warned of a mirror image result of the 1988 presidential election when President George H.W. Bush won 40 states in what they called an electoral romp. Wow. So, again, this, this is based on Republican sources. Uh, that said, I do have to note this. They could be gaslighting and making sure that we're not, you know, that we're, that we're getting a little bit full of hubris, right? Maybe a repeat of 2016. Oh, don't worry. We got this. Even Republicans are saying, I don't know. It could be, or they could be legitimately crapping their pants and going, what are you doing, Donald Trump? We're going to lose. We're going to lose. So now what's encouraging about this is you've got a bunch of House and Senate races, congressional races that are right now being decided, like, who's going to run in those congressional races in primaries. For example, you've got um, great candidates like Jamal Bowman. J Jamal Bowman is going after Elliot Angle. Jamal Bowman is beating Elliot Angle. You have Charles Booker versus Amy McGrath in Kentucky for the right to take on Mitch McConnell. I think Charles Booker has a much, much better chance of defeating Mitch McConnell than somebody like Amy McGrath, who is basically Allison Leonard and Grimes 2.0. If you don't know who that is, well, there's a reason because she lost so badly. You also have Paula Jean Swearingen. She won her primary already. You have so many other great progressive candidates that are running that if this situation holds 
And people are so sick of Republicans right now that they turn out for Biden and then they go progressive down ticket. Well, then there you go. That's going to be that's going to be good. Those are significant wins for progressives and a way to remake Congress. You might not have the White House, might not have a progressive in the White House, but you'll have a progressive Congress. And that just means if Biden is gone and we get a, a, a progressive replacement, then we actually have people in Congress that could pass a Medicare for all system. And so that's good. I like that. Uh, all right. So now there's more. Now, Republicans see this, right? And they see this they see this train coming at them, right? And so they have this warning, quote, Trump has to get his shit together and his campaign has to get their shit together uh, or it's going to be really problematic. It would be catastrophic. Get your shit together. Get it together. Bring it to the shit store. Do something. Just get it together. That's what they're saying. That's awesome. Uh, now, Republicans say that uh, Trump is getting blown out with independent voters and continues to drop with women, uh, specifically white women without college degrees. So they're moving away from him as well. Uh, some have also seen uh, an erosion with senior citizens as well as voters in Gen X. Uh, Trump's also starting to lose support from his base. Uh, two separate sources said recent private polls found Trump's approval rating slipping into the low 80s with the Republicans. Now, that might not seem significant, but remember, Donald Trump normally enjoyed the high 90s with the Republicans. If it's slipping down to the 80s, not good. That doesn't mean they're going to turn around and vote Democrat. No, what they're going to do is they're not going to be excited to go out and vote. So that's interesting. So obviously, big caveats, right? That's all the information, but here's some caveats. Now, again, we've got four or five months, right? A lot can change. We could have a vaccine. We could have an economic recovery. Both of those things would be good things, by the way, but electorally also advantageous for Donald Trump. And so we'll be fair about that. Uh, you could also have Republicans keep hold of the Senate if moderate Democrats decide that they are going to block progressives by supporting Republicans in congressional races. You don't think that would happen? That's exactly what Joe Biden had done. Uh, Joe Biden supported Fred Upton, uh, who was a Republican, against a progressive challenger. So that certainly can happen. That is one way where the Democrats can ensure that they don't get a majority, that they lose by blocking progressives. So in that case, it would once again prove that Democrats would rather have Republicans in office than progressives. And so that is something to worry about. You could also see, of course, Donald Trump losing the popular vote again, but getting enough of a win in certain places to still win the Electoral College. That could definitely happen. And not only that, but look, success isn't guaranteed. You also have voter suppression, for example, which is really, really huge. as a gigantic thing. You have voting irregularities. Uh, you have people being purged in Republican states from the voter rolls. You have all that stuff to be concerned with. And even, you know, with all of that, you also have Republicans. Look, Republicans defending some pretty hard seats, right, for them to for, for the Democrats to flip. So it's going to take a, a, a lot, like a Democrat winning in Montana or Iowa. And so that's another thing. Right. And again, Never underestimate the ability of Democrats to pull defeat from the jaws of victory. That's it. All that. It does look bad for Trump right now. One GOP strategist who expects less worry than many others uh, originally uh, had called uh, and talked to Vice. Uh, and they called them immediately after seeing news of former National Security Advisor John Bolton's accusations towards Donald Trump. And so here's where, how that call began. It started with this. Holy shit. That's a quote. And then says, are we at the bottom or has the bottom not even dropped out yet? Wondered another strategist. I don't know what gets us out of this. People are probably just fucking sick of it. And by it, 
meaning the daily circus that is covering that is that is the Trump administration. Look, I, I'm not saying that Biden's definitely going to win, right? I'm just saying if this stays the same, if we still have this situation, very likely Joe Biden might walk uh, into the White House. And uh, that would be the end of Donald Trump. I'm just saying that's possible. Uh, and though we shouldn't obviously let down our guard or shouldn't take anything for granted, of course. Uh, but I mean, that might be might be the end of Donald Trump's reign. Hey, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc. We're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYT Nation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.